Great, thank you. Hi, how are you all doing? Yeah, how are you? Uh, how are you? Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Well, thank you again for taking the time out to speak with me today. I appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to get started asking you, John, about the development of the script for the film, and I swear that you co-wrote the film overall, and what was that experience like of really coming up with the story for the film overall? Uh, yeah, I had um, I'd done a film, uh, which was a slice of life uh, film called Buddy Cha. And uh, I really loved the idea of doing a caper film. So I thought I would uh, take something like the, the caper genre and set it in the beautiful uh, minstrel carnival of Cape Town. Um, yeah, and the results have been, it's been amazing. And then um, for the case, I wanted to ask you all as well about how you became involved in starring in the film and what you liked about your respective characters. So for myself, um, my name is Jacques De Silva. I played Jerome. Um, I I got an audition for for the part and then um, managed to work with John in a TV series a little bit later. And so I auditioned and hadn't heard anything. And John and then I saw John on this TV show and he said, "It's happening, <laughs> it's happening." Yeah, <laughs> um, but, then, but then Jock said, but then Jock said he couldn't do it, and I was like, "Hey, this guy." <laughs> like, oh, I'm starting a TV show, telenovela, and I don't think I can do it. I was like. Uh, you're killing me, here, John. <laughs> <laughs> but luckily, like or everything else in this in this film, the the planets aligned in uh, right time, right place. We were um, we managed to get the, the super team together. So yeah, so uh, very very excited, very very grateful that I I was able to that we were able to put the uh, get together to be able to make this film. <laughs> yeah, I uh, I met I met John at uh, I did a workshop with him a couple of years before um before we shot i think it was like three years before and yeah. after the workshop he was like oh i've, I've been thinking about you about this film project it's called i didn't even know if he told me the name he was like oh there's a script i'm like yeah i'll read it and every few months he would also he would call me and be like hey, are you still available are you still around are we still gonna do it <laughs> and uh, so i'd been attached to the script for literally like three years before it got made and when john picked up the phone i think it was like 2020 or 2020 like yeah. it was a 2020 and it was like it's happening it's happening and i was like yeah right sure, sure. <laughs> Thank you for three years and then and then last year last year was the last one and he was like yeah it's happening it's happening and i'm like mm, okay well once you yeah. tell my agent then i'll believe you and then I <laughs> four months after that because i think you had lost funding and then found known associates and then we made the film three years later so yeah. <laughs> well, okay. I I came on. I think I was the last to come on um, as as a crew. But I just I just did a self tape, right, John? I didn't get to. Watch yeah, you did. Well, no, I watched you. I watched Atlantis. Dan. Uh, Dan actually Atlantis? said, uh, "Yeah, a whole lot of people said there's this fantastic young actress, Bronte Snell. She's been in this film, and I haven't seen Atlantis. And uh, I don't like Dan very much. No, no I'm joking. <laughs> I like Dan. Right? Yeah, that guy." <laughs> <laughs> no, no. So then he sent me a link, but it, it hadn't even been, I think it was like a rough cut that he sent me. He said, see this, she, this she's amazing. And then I watched it and I was completely blown away. And I was like, I'd love to have you on board. It was just, and then on top of that, hey. then on top of that, you arrived to the to the wardrobe call and you had dreadlocks. Bronte said, I, I, I took a I chance. Just... She said, yeah, Yo, you said, the, what's the character most like? And I, and I kind of said, because of the, the guitar playing, you feel a bit like Lauren Hill. And and Bronte's like, oh, that's cool. And and I said, um, and I jokingly said, but you wouldn't, you know, wouldn't do dreadlocks. And Bronte's like, no, 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 I, I would, I would absolutely do that. And then she left the wardrobe call, and I thought, and she said, no, I'll, I'll definitely talk about doing the dreads. And I thought, okay, it's going to be a couple of days, and she's going to come to me and say, listen, I'm not going to put dreadlocks in my, hair. I'm not going to put extensions in my hair. And I swear, she after that that that, that call, about three hours later, she sent me a picture. With the extensions in her hair, it was just like oh. absolutely amazing. I thought, like, I'm gonna, I'm looking forward to working with her because she's so amazing, so passionate. I love that. It's so cool, Bronte. Dedication. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, passion, man. It's beautiful to work with actors like that. It's a dream. I swear. It's like it's crazy. Um, I was here to make coffee. <laughs> <laughs> He walked past me. Yeah, uh, just coffee. Yeah, just pot. <laughs> um. So I was, a, I, I think, 14 years ago when John initially got this project going, I was a part of the, the, the proof of concept. And then as the years went on, I think my role changed and I had to do a casting like all of us. And then 
yeah, I, I think once John gave us the call, it was we were set to go. I was, Squad go. Was, we were like, Action let's mode. go. And, and like Jock said, it's about timing. It was the right time, the right people. So, yeah. Here we are. <laughs> Also, I'm speaking about like the costumes and the look for the characters. What was that experience like for you all to really create the looks of for you each, each of your characters as well as your own? You want to start, John? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I thought the question was for the car. Sorry, what is the question? Uh, um, for you as well, also um, about creating the looks for the characters and really getting to work with everyone, um, the cast and um, the casting designer and the look for the characters as well. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, it was very interesting. The, the That whole thing about uh, Bronte's character, Mila, having the dreadlocks, that made her look amazing and unique and stood out uh, from the rest of the guys. So that was beautiful that we, we got that. And then uh, a lot of the colors, we were trying to avoid blue. Um, we avoided blue colors in the shooting and the lighting of the set and in the wardrobes. So no one wore blue, uh, blue at all. It was all browns and oranges. And it was, it was almost because we're trying to create a nostalgic feel. We have District 6 in there. And it just felt like even the lenses we chose for shooting were these old, um, old cook lenses. And uh, they were from the 1930s. And they had this beautiful, soft sense about them. And it feels like it's an older film almost. It's a set in 2021, but it feels like it's something from the 70s or 60s. So we avoided blues until the, the gang started getting into trouble um, in the in the bank and in the vault. And then we use a lot of blue lighting. Uh, for Keenan, we try to have a 1990s hip hop vibe about him. Uh, he didn't go to prison that long ago, but uh, because he was in prison, he kind of had this gangster vibe about him. So that was his look, um, chains, the baggy clothes, and then for um, for Shamila, for Keisha, we try to make also her stand out from the rest of the guys. Very casual. We put her in the banking clothes, um, and then uh, Shamila's got a great vibe with with her boots. So we always put her in boots, which she looks amazing in those. Um, so it was a kind of a mix of dead of leathers with her, and in casual kind of short skirts and the boots, which is cool. Made her feel a bit like she was her apartment was. Um, she was aspiring to climb the corporate ladder. She's she quite corporate at times and obviously very smart in the bank look. Uh, and then her hair tied up, obviously. And then uh, when she was meeting with, um, with, with Jacques, uh, with Jerome later, then the hair would come down more relaxed. And for Jacques, we wanted him to be the, the kind of uh, hip hop producer in a way, almost like Anderson Park uh, or Mac Miller, that kind of vibe of a, of a, a hip hop producer uh, based in Joburg, so we wanted his look to be slightly different from the guys in Cape Town, whereas they were kind of more warm colours. We went with greys and blacks with him. So he had a black leather jacket, grey t-shirt, um, yeah, black boots, uh, yeah, kind of skinny jeans at times, just to try and make it feel more contemporary, and that the Cape Town guys would be more kind of lost in that nostalgic world. But there's such a lovely, for me, a really, really lovely storytelling in in just Jerome's wardrobe about how yeah. during the course of the of the film uh, he starts to yes. up, he starts to Cape Town, and then yeah, uh, I had such fun the other evening uh, when we watched the premiere to to see the, uh, one of the last scenes, and he's he looks like as Cape Town yeah. as can be. He is relaxed. He's got his little like he's comfy. What are they called? Like all star sneakers on. Yeah. He's, yeah. Um, so the narrative, the storytelling, and how the they, they start to chip away at this at this idea of who he is um, yeah. and he starts to settle into 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 his community, into his identity is is um, yeah very clever. Mm -hmm. Also, um, John, I wanted to ask you about um, directing the film as well and just maybe what your overall approach was to going from working on the script and to directing. Uh, sorry, but it's very really noisy. Yeah, sorry. What is, the, what is the end of the question? Yeah, um, besides working on the script for the film, what, what was your experience like going from working on the script into directing on set as well? Uh, yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was amazing. I am... Um, we were very lucky to have uh, such amazing cast who from time to time talking to them and watching the films that they'd made and the work that they'd done, that they were so versatile uh, at, at sticking to script, but also 
using improv uh, based off the script. So I like to have a like read throughs and and not do so much a rehearsal, but just getting the actors into character, then using the script uh, as a base and then allowing them to play and to bring lines in. Like last night watching the the film, there was just some beautiful moments that each one of the actors brought. There were it was improv. It wasn't scripted. And it just, it makes the film feel more realistic and more natural and more organic. And uh, so that the script was never use it as a blueprint. We just use it as a base. And then we spring from that and we play with the characters and we just make magic. So it was, it was beautiful. It was, it was a great process to, to be involved in. And um, for the case, I also wanted to ask you all as well about getting to work together and building your characters and your experiences in traveling on set as well. <laughs> Clearly we all hate each other. <laughs> uh, um, no, I think John did a very good job in, in, in finding the right energies to put together. Um, we weren't really, we knew each other, but we weren't friends before this movie, but we're now family. But even in those beginning stages, like we became so close so quickly, our, our chemistry worked so well together um, as a team. And even in the in, in, in Paris throughout the film, not only with just the four of us, everyone that was cast. And um, I think that John had that eye from the get go of how everything was going to work. And I think he probably thanks his lucky stars every day that <laughs> that it did work because you, you can see it all there on screen. Um, the chemistry is natural and beautiful and and yeah we put something but most of it was just natural yeah i mean we hung out i mean i didn't know you Joff, before mm. before this project um i knew keenan i we kind of knew each other but we didn't have a lot of scenes together maybe maybe right. in the next movie but yeah. um i mean keenan and Jacques and i we, we hung out a little bit before and um I, you know these are just great people and um they're so giving with their with their acting technique so um it was easy to connect to them um we have this you know three musketeer thing going on and it there was just moments where it just flowed and it was just so organic but um we were just honest with each other we were ourselves you know and we were real and that's what made it that's what made this project great is that everyone was like just authentic and just open um to giving and flowing and and that's what I think that's what brought those moments where we, it was just spontaneous and we were improving because we were just there and liquor I mean, and believed in the story and and loved working with John. So, yeah. yeah. But also to add to what Bronte is saying, I think John allowed the space, he gave us the space to be yeah. who we needed to be as the, as the characters, but also as people, just to come on set and just be ourselves, you know? So thank you, John. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, so Karen, there's also this thing about so the, what they're saying is absolutely true. The the the, the flow and the chemistry and all that stuff was liquor. But you also, uh, I was really excited to see that I was working with three uh, these three in particular other actors who are incredibly dedicated and incredibly studious. The the three of them are every single night are doing their work. They're doing the beats, they're doing the the, 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 the ugly stuff uh, so that they can, and they do come to the floor and play. Uh, so like all of the natural stuff, yes. Yeah. But these are but also we, the we, most we, studious, yeah. hardworking people. We pray yeah, but that's, but that's, yeah. but that's every, no, every, no, every scene we broke down, like I remember even like yeah. Jacques and I had, um, we, everything that was shot in Keisha's apartment, we did on one day and the night before then, we were literally going through every line, every beat. Um, and we and we were playing around with the scenes, like uh, we were doing so many different exercises and, um, and, and, and playing through the beats and the moments constantly for hours and hours. So when we did get, you're, you're right, we did, we got into set and then we could play because everything yeah. settled in our bodies because we knew exactly what we were trying to say. And because yeah, your, the yeah, the characters, yeah. Set. So yeah, they do the characters so well, you know. They're, yeah, yeah. And, and also, yeah, true. I mean, that's exactly what Jacques is saying: is that you can't pull off improv uh, or make it look natural if you just rock up on the day and start going. Now we're going to improv. We don't know what we're going to do. It yeah. takes dedication from from the actors to know their scripts, to learn their scripts, to arrive on set. You won't believe how many times I've been on set and people rock up. You can see they don't know their lines. Then you then you've got no base to work with. 
you have to have actors who are professional, who read their scripts, who know their characters in and out, and then they bring these beautiful nuggets and this beautiful little magic and these mistakes that are wonderful. But you can't get that if you don't have dedication. So also I think, hard... I think John, what helps what helped was the fact that we lived together. We were all sort of in <laughs> we we in commune. Basically, yeah. we, we, were shooting, to, we, we hung were out together. We were shooting, shooting on location. We hung out together, out. and I think uh, I think that's what translates onto mm -hmm. screen. Is this this sort of like after 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 set hangout, and we were getting to know each other. I mean, I only met Jacques on this film. Shamila and I knew each other, but we 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 weren't, we, friends. We weren't friends. Grant and I had worked together before, mm -hmm. but hanging out and just like having a meal, cooking, and chatting about character, chatting story. We were in that script we were constantly. In the zone yeah. All the time. So I think, I think then getting onto set was, it was so easy. It was easy, it, it, you know, it, was, it just flowed. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And also I'm speaking about the location, I was about to ask about that experience um, overall as well, and what you all liked about being able to Live together and shoot on location um, throughout production as well. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, being from Cape Town, it was such a, a, a I, I guess, a full circle moment for me. But to be able to work with John and work with these actors in my hometown and shoot this film, this genre film, it was such a blessing. It just sort of came together. Like Jacques said, the timing, um, the right people, the right time. It just, for me, it, it worked out perfectly. So Yeah, and Cape Town is a, I mean, shooting on location in Cape Town is always special. Um, mm. And then what we were shooting was so important because community, this culture, um, hasn't really been shown in the best of light in other movies before. So what we were doing and the story that we were telling, the way we were telling it was also really special. And the way we were showing Cape Town um, in a way that hadn't been seen before and the, and the colorfulness of the culture that we were showing, I think that was really important to us. And we felt it as we were shooting as well. We were yeah. doing something new. Um, so yeah. showing, showing Cape Town in that new way was incredibly special. It's like we were shooting uh, between the lines, you know, like yeah. uh, Cape Town, there's got these big features, there's Table Mountain, <laughs> there's the ocean, and what, and what John uh, and, and the rest of the incredible team did is they found us locations in between the lines that we, uh, where we yeah. just were able right. to, to reveal um, a little bit more intimacy with the city. Right. And so yeah. this film is so intimate with Cape Town that it is, uh, I think that is... That is what is what, what people are connecting to too. Is yeah. this like here also, we are? And Mark says, like I think also the location is another character in this film, so uh, it was easy to be able to play in that in that space, on the location. Like you could just immerse yourself as a character, you know, and just. Be such a great job with capturing that. You know, I like that they didn't use the typical locations that that. Cape Town is, you know, a pretty beautiful touristy known spot. Um, like like you, or someone said yesterday, we you, you stayed away from Table Mountain. You know, you showed the rest of Cape Town. That was that's also beautiful. Yeah. That's a bit more raw, you know. And you're showing the the true side of the culture. That's um, it's it's not picture perfect, but it's still beautiful. People it's are living here. Yeah, people are actually yeah. living here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And what's the experience been like for you all to be able to bring the movie now to Toronto and share it with your the festival? <laughs> we're here, we're in it. Yeah. Oh, no, we're in it. I, just, I wish I was with John. Like, uh, John, you're so far. Yeah. I wish, I wish, I wish we were here. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I know it's far, but we'll be together soon. You know? So soon. <laughs> no, it's been incredible. Oh, we miss you, John. We miss you <laughs> so much. No, Toronto's so it's it's been absolutely amazing. We're having a great time, as you can see. We uh, we're having a lot of fun. Uh, we just done a great photo shoot in a hotel room, and uh, it's, it's been there. lovely, lovely chatting to you too. It's so cool to be here. And it's incredibly welcoming. Uh, we had again. It was mentioned earlier. We had a we had played to a full house. Literally, we I, we walked in, and I like I I had a little bit of a drizz uh, yeah. because 
you know, we, we, we make in isolation and because of COVID and we show online, we show with streaming, the the communion of an audience uh, is something is something that I am uh, and to be in, with an audience at a festival, um, international festival in Toronto oh. is um, it is a gift and we and and we are grateful. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> grateful. I mean, just for me, it brought me like I was also feeling a little emotional because this movie to me is like. I, I feel it like this is my culture, this is my city, this is my people, and these are our stories, and I love it. But seeing the warm welcome that Toronto gave us and people yeah. from different cultures, people from different nationalities saying, wow, your story is amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, your people, the nation, the, the Cape Carnival, it's beautiful, and we mm -hmm. like it, and we want to know more about it. You know, that's <laughs> like, what? Yeah. <laughs> And we, yeah, we also heard. Uh, I was also like, uh, like Jack was saying, is that I was nervous about uh, how many people were going to turn up. I kept asking, "Are we sold out? Are we sold out? Are we sold out?" And then I, I found out that we, in fact, we were sold out, but we've been sold out for all the next uh, four screenings that we have. Wow! So that's we crazy. That, but yeah, that's amazing. Sold out. That's awesome. It's crazy. So thank you, Toronto. That's so cool. Yeah. I think that was mainly it, but thank you very much again for taking the time out. I really appreciate it. Thank you so thank much. Thank you so much. So much. Thank you. And uh, again, our apologies for being late. No problem. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. 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 John, see you soon. Eh? See you guys.